Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome into the video. So in this one, we're going to be talking about three mid and large cap stocks with huge upside for 2023 and beyond. So last week we talked about three small cap stocks. The weeks before we talked about the highest upside mega cap stocks. So this week we are finishing off the series. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next on the channel. Whether you want me to go back to the shorter term analysis and trade ideas or those longer term investment ideas. All right, so let's go ahead and get on into it. So the first stock we're going to be talking about is Twilio, ticker symbol TWLO. So this company was a huge victim of the software bubble popping as it's now down about 75% in the past year and was down over 90% from all time highs to 52 week lows. It currently has a market cap of a little bit below $10 billion. All right, so getting on into the thesis with this stock, in my opinion, Twilio has just become way too cheap. So for those who are unfamiliar with software stocks, these are usually valued on price to sales ratio instead of the price to earnings ratio that most stocks are valued on. Now why is that? Well, software companies are high margin businesses, they're not selling physical products, so they have more earnings potential on each sale. A company making physical products may make around 5-10% to on each sale, while a software business could be making 30-50% to on each sale when they're optimized for profitability. Now according to this chart from the Clouded Judgment newsletter, this shows the enterprise value which is just the market cap adjusted for the cash and debt on hand divided by the next 12 month sales. The long term pre-COVID average for software businesses was 7.8 times EV to revenue. At the peak it got to 20 times revenue and now that the bubble has popped the average is currently sitting at 5.2 times EV to revenue. So we're certainly seeing a substantial historical discount on these businesses where they're at right now. I like this tweet a lot from Ricky Sandler, and by the way, he's the CEO and Chief Investment Officer of Eminence Capital, and this is a hedge fund that runs $5 billion, so he's a major industry player. So Sandler says, software slash software as a service investors making exactly the same mistake they made 18 months ago, ignoring valuation. Back in 2021, most believed they could pay 20 times revenue for a grossly unprofitable software company because the company had business momentum and would beat estimates. Now they don't want to pay 4 to 6 times revenue and companies inflecting to profitability because the business is decelerating and they might miss estimates. Memo to growth slash tech investors, valuation should always be an important piece of the puzzle. So now we were talking about how the current EV to sales average for software is 5.2 times EV to revenue and the historical average is 7.8 times. While well, taking a look at Twilio, this business is only trading for 1.6 times EV to next 12 month sales, which is insanely cheap for a software business. Now Twilio certainly isn't the highest quality software business and it is not the fastest growing, but it may just be the best value play in the sector. Taking a look at some charts, its revenue growth is declining which has been expected especially in this economic climate, but still growing quickly with the most recent quarter up 33% year over year. Same thing with gross profit, the growth is slowing but still up 25% year over year. Twilio has a lot of software products that businesses use with solutions, services, API, network, tools, and more. At the end of the day, you don't see software companies that are still growing consistently trade at multiples as cheap as this is for long. When stocks get this cheap, there are two things that usually happen. You will usually see either a buyout at a large premium or an activist investor come in. Both would be a massive positive catalyst for the stock price and a big part of the overall thesis on this stock. So the company has a killer balance sheet with currently about $4.2 billion of cash on hand. Now personally, I ignore Goodwill being counted as an asset, and what Goodwill shows is that they overpaid for a past acquisition they made, which can then be used as a write-off, but truly is not an asset in my opinion, so I ignore that part of it. If we take the total assets minus the Goodwill, we come out with $7.3 billion in total assets, minus $2.08 billion of total liabilities, and if we subtract the liabilities from assets, we get $5.25 billion in assets minus liabilities, which is more than half of Twilio's entire market cap, just another factor for how cheap this stock is. Now taking a look at their numbers and projections, their revenue growth is expected to continue to slow to about 17% next year as the economic climate likely gets much worse. Also Twilio has been historically an unprofitable company as they focus straight on growth but they are expected to get back to slight profitability next year at about $30 million in net income. The CEO has said that they are focusing on profitability moving forward, so there should be some great progress on that in the years ahead. Overall, the company is certainly not cheap on an earnings basis, 
But with the earning potential that it does have in the future, along with the pristine balance sheet and potential for a buyout or activist investor, I'm a big fan of the long-term risk award on Twilio stock. Now taking a quick look at the technical chart, I like the base that's formed and recently reclaimed above the 50-day moving average. There's a lot of overhead supply and a long way to go for the chart before it's truly healthy for sure, but we're potentially seeing a bottoming base here with very nice risk reward moving forward. All right, so the next stock that we're going to be talking about is Solar Edge, ticker symbol SEDG. And this is kind of a two for one. We're going to talk about Solar Edge and then quickly go over another stock in the same sector, since both of these will move very similarly, in my opinion. So Solar Edge is about a $17.5 billion company and has held up very well during this bear market, being actually positive by about 20% in the past year. The solar energy sector has been the number one sector in the stock market for the better part of the past year as well, as many are realizing the massive growth and earnings potential ahead for the industry. In their presentation, Solar Edge outlines the massively growing worldwide demand for electricity and the massive benefit that it will have for solar and other renewable sources in the future. They lay out a quote green scenario where solar takes up 32% of the installed electricity by 2050. And now maybe that number ends up being closer to the mid to high 20s, but this industry has massive growth ahead, no doubt. So Solar Edge's business model is to attack all different solar industries. This is their residential model, this is their commercial model, utility model, and they are also in the energy storage and electric vehicle businesses as well. So this is essentially one of the prime trades on the solar and the renewable energy sector moving forward. So taking a look at their balance sheet now, Solar Edge has $880 million in cash on hand, $3.9 billion in total assets versus $1.85 billion in total liabilities. So overall they have about $2.05 billion in assets minus liabilities. Strong balance sheet for sure, but nothing to write home about. The number one most attractive thing with this stock is the massive earnings growth that they have ahead. So the company projects for $8.50 in earnings per share next year, which is about 80% earnings growth year over year. And keep in mind, this is during an economic downturn, which comes out to a mid-30s PE with massive growth ahead. If they execute on that, man, this company is set up very, very well moving forward. Taking a quick look at the technical chart, this is a big part of my overall thesis on this stock and might just be my favorite long-term technical chart in the market. So this has essentially formed a two and a half year long bull flag pattern, which is shown nicely by the weekly chart. One of the things that I live by with technical analysis is the longer that a pattern is formed, the larger that the breakout move will be when it does break out. I have 370 to 389.7 as the key resistance zone above. So once it breaks above there, in my opinion, this will result in a massive breakout and potentially a multi-year move to the upside. When you see a stock holding up this well during a massive bear market, once the next bull market comes around, you bet that it's going to break out big time. So along with Solar Edge, I'm going to throw Enphase in here as well with it. Enphase is close to double the size of Solar Edge with a current market cap of about $33 billion and has been one of the best stock performers over the past year, up about 70%. So like I was talking about, these are numbers that are amazing to see in a bear market, and once we get back to a bull market, there's a high chance that these leaders go even higher. If it's holding up that well in a bear market, you bet that it's going to go higher in a bull market. So Enphase and Solar Edge both compete in the solar sector, though there's a few differentiators in products, business models, and targets for each company though. Enphase's products and business as a whole are arguably higher quality, but that comes with a cost as the stock is trading for more expensive multiples as well. According to Green Solar, comparing each company's solar inverters, Solar Edge is the slightly cheaper option, but Enphase is slightly more efficient with, with an overall system efficiency of about 98% versus Solar Edge's 97% efficiency. There is plenty of room for both of these companies to be successful though, and personally believe that both of these will perform great as stocks over time. Enphase stock had a bigger year last year, which may mean that Solar Edge has a bigger year this year. Enphase has a good but not great balance sheet with about $700 million in total assets minus liabilities. With these numbers and projections, we can see just how great of a business this has been over the past few years, and management for Enphase has absolutely killed it. It has super consistent growth and profitability over the past five years, and is expected to grow revenue 36% next year, and profitability about 23%, so not making as big of a leap as Solar Edge in that sense. According to the normalized EPS projection, it's trading for around a 46 forward PE, compared to Solar Edge's around 35, 
But like we've said, this is arguably a higher quality business. So this PE could end up staying on the higher side for longer. And this is another chart with a great technical setup as well, where it's currently bouncing off that previous 220 to 230 breakout zone as new support. Overall, I like the outlook and setup on Solar Edge a little bit more than Enphase personally, but both of these stocks are very attractive plays for years to come, in my personal opinion. Alright, so the final stock we're going to be talking about in this video is Shopify stock, ticker symbol SHOP. Now, Shopify is another stock that has had quite the fall from grace, as it's down about 63% in the past year and close to 80% down from all time highs, and this currently trades for a little bit below a $50 billion market cap. Now I'd personally describe Shopify as a very high quality business that is going through a major rough patch right now. Shopify is by far and away the best e-commerce site builder for businesses and there's a great chance that quality and growth will win out in the end for this one. And real quick before we get further into this one, I want to talk about the technical chart real quick. One of the greatest technical analysts of all time, Stan Weinstein, created a model called Stage Analysis. So with this model, when a stock forms a base after a bear market, it's stage one that starts the new uptrend. Stage two is the uptrend itself. Stage three is when a stock is topping. And stage four is the stock's bear market. Now he uses the 30 week moving average for this. You can either use the 200 day moving average or the 30 week moving average. Both will work similarly. So Shopify's chart is a pretty textbook example of this stage analysis. 2020 through half of 2021 was stage two. The other half of 2021 was stage 3, and the majority of 2022 has been stage 4. Shopify has now been forming a massive stage 1 base for about 7 months and is looking primed to break out and enter its stage 2 uptrend soon enough. It's currently breaking above its 200 day moving average right now, so I just wanted to go over that real quick to show why this technical chart is now looking very, very attractive. Alright, so back to the business itself now. Shopify is by far the leader in e-commerce site building. It's been referred to as the Amazon killer in the past, since if a company wants to sell on its own site, it's going to go with Shopify, which of course hurts Amazon in the end. Now, it's obviously a reach that Amazon will be substantially hurt bad by other e-commerce sites, but a lot of companies now sell on their own Shopify store and on Amazon at the same time. The great thing about Shopify is it's a subscription-based business where customers are charged a monthly fee by Shopify, so it's a compounding and recurring revenue effect of sorts. Shopify also has a big payments portion of the business with ShopPay, which adds to the growth. As businesses grow and get more sales on the platform, Shopify essentially grows along with them as the more sales they have, the more fees that Shopify makes from ShopPay. Now keep in mind that a lot of businesses have been greatly affected and some have run out of business during this economic downturn, which has certainly hurt Shopify big time, shown well with this visual. The great thing is though, is once the economy gets back on the growth track, and by the way, it probably gets worse before it gets better, Shopify will be in a great growth position once again in the future. Maybe something like this plays out, where recurring revenue declines or goes sideways more first, but then gets back into strong growth. So Shopify also has a strong balance sheet with $4.9 billion in cash. And if we subtract the goodwill, it has about $9.36 billion in total assets versus just $2.51 billion in total liabilities. So they're in a great capital position moving forward. This company also has a lot of long-term bets and investments in smaller companies. For example, they own 6.5% of Global E with the option to buy 10% plus of the company, which is an international e-commerce site builder. Shopify also is investing for better delivery and fulfillment, such as the recent acquisition of Deliver. Shopify is expected to grow revenue of about 20% next year, with profitability taking a hit due to the economic climate, along with their investments into their fulfillment build-out warehouse space and others right now. But like we were talking about, there's a great chance for Shopify to get back to faster growth and profitability once the economic outlook does improve once again, which is of course bound to happen at some point. These cycles always happen and it always plays out the same way. So those are three, I guess you could say four of the most attractive mid slash large cap stocks for 2023 and beyond in my opinion. Give me your thoughts in the comments down below on these. I appreciate you guys watching. Everybody interested in joining the private Discord chat, that is the first link down below in the description to get my personal trade alerts, not little watch lists, answer any questions you have, and more. Let me know also what stocks you guys are buying right now, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for watching, and peace out.